me think about how many animals lived on the planet over such a long period of time. You know, this is 67 million years. The chance of finding one that's been fossilised, incredibly rare. The chance of finding one that's been fossilised and some of the parts are still associated with each other, even rarer still. The chance of finding one like this, where it's all still basically articulated, unbelievably rare. Most fossils that we find are fragments. It might be the tip of a horn or the tip of a beak, and you'd go home happy after a discovery like that. So this skeleton represents a step beyond your typical experience as a paleontologist. Yeah, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. You know, I got to watch it come out of the rock and then I got to watch it come from hundreds of pieces together into this one incredible animal and sort of feel the scale and the size of it. So I feel like I've had a really, really privileged view of being able to see it um, in such close detail. To see its head in completion, the size and scale of that, uh, it goes from being individual fragments to the skeleton of a dinosaur. The pose was partly informed by, you know, lots and lots of research and understanding exactly how these animals moved, but a lot of that was also informed by the skeleton. Deformation in the skeleton can mean that you end up with some quite strange mismatched parts. So there's a big block of vertebrae at the posterior end of the spine which are actually still all fused together because they've got the ossified tendons running along the back. Um, so because they're fused together, we can't curl that because it only can go in one direction. So, you know, there's only certain areas of the spine where we could introduce that natural curvature. There are so many individual decisions throughout this entire skeleton that have had to be made for that final result. Like, how wide do we think a triceratops can open its mouth? Or what angle should it hold its head at if it's walking rather than resting or feeding? The left femur is quite elongated and stretched. It's actually folded over with plastic deformation, which is really cool. And the right femur is actually foreshortened and, you know, crunched this way. We wanted to have some movement and, um, you know, to be quite dynamic. So you can see that one of the legs is actually raised at the back and that actually compensates for the shorter femur. I think that the best marker of success for all of those scientific and aesthetic decisions is that you won't notice them. When the team finished assembling and installing all of the digits, the hand and finger bones, and to see that final toe go in place and that it's standing on its own feet, that's when we really knew that it had worked. We did it! We're finished. Yes!